Now we're gonna take a look at the important properties of the solution we found from video number 8. These properties are valid for any solutions for the Schrodinger equation. H psi equals E psi. So for the infinite square will we just uh, did in uh, video number 8, we have arrived to the solution of psi sub n of x equals the, normali the normalization constant square root of 2 over a times sine of n pi divided by a x so th these are the solutions for the Schrodinger equation with the infinite square will potential where the particle lives somewhere here so there are four properties the first property these wave functions this psi the solution is a wave function they are even and odd with respect to the center of the will. So that's the first property. The second property, they oscillate, okay? As we go up in energy, each uh, successful state each successive state has one more node when I say node I mean zero crossing So what that means, that means the first node goes like this, so this is A, this is X, and this is uh, Psi, so this is Psi 1, so Psi 1 has no nodes, Psi 2 has one node, so it goes like this. Psi 3 has two nodes. So this is A. This is the potential. Remember the wave function psi lives inside this potential. So the first state, we call it the first quantum state, is psi 1. It has zero nodes. Psi 2 has one node, psi 3 has two nodes and so forth. The third property is uh, they are orthogonal to each other. So these solutions they are mutually What that means mathematically, it means if you integrate one quantum state, let's call it psi of sub m of x, complex conjugate, times another state, psi sub n of x dx, if you integrate this, 
this should be equal to zero. That's what orthog. Uh, well, that's what they are orthogonal means. Let's let's try to prove that because that's gonna show up more and more. It's gonna show up throughout the entire course. So what our psi function? Our psi function is two divided by a times. We're gonna integrate between zero and a sine of one quantum state. We call it the m quantum state by a times sine of another quantum state we call it n of pi uh, and the nth quantum state if we integrate this uh, this integral should be equal to zero so let's see if it is if you remember we have the the, this uh, trig uh, trig properties. So sine you can see it, but sine a sine alpha sine beta is given by this by the subtraction the difference of the cosines. So we're gonna use this trig identity here. So here we have one divided by a. The integral from zero to a of cosine of m minus n divided by a times pi x minus cosine of m plus n divided by a pi x dx so we use this trig identity so now we're gonna do the integral 1 divided by m minus n times pi times the sine of m minus n divided by a pi x minus 1 divided by m plus n times the sine yeah, of m plus n divided by a times pi x we can integrate from 0 to a so doing the integral right now we have uh, one div I think there's a pi here. One divided by m minus n times pi. No, my bad. Let's erase this. Now we have one divided by pi times the sine of m minus n times pi divided by m minus n minus the sine of uh, so, uh, yeah m plus n divided by m plus n times pi and obviously this is equal to zero so what that means in uh, in other words it means that if we integrate over all space one quantum state x times another quantum state dx we should get a solution right and this solution we call it the chronica the chronica delta delta m n 
or this delta m n I'm gonna be using this delta delta m n throughout the course is equal to zero if m if m is not equal to n we just proved that uh, or it's equal to one if m is equal to n and this is normalization so this chronicle delta it's it puts orthogonality and normalization in one statement so the integral over all space of one quantum state times another quantum state is equal to this chronicle delta it's zero if the two quantum states are different it's one if they are the same quantum state so that's the third property finally the fourth property is they are complete so these solutions are complete what the heck do I mean by that I mean you can express any function okay you can express any function f of x okay as a linear combination oops as a linear combination of them them are the 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 size we just showed so any function can be expressed as a linear combination of them okay so f of x where f of x is any function okay is equal to the sum when n starts from 1 it goes to infinity of some uh, expansion coefficients c of n's times psi of n of x in our example n of x is this normalization constant the sum when n starts from 1 to infinity of c of n the, the expansion coefficients sine of n pi x divided by a here we go so if you studied advanced calculus you, sh you should know that this is nothing but a Fourier series So this here, this equation here, is nothing but a Fourier series of this function we're talking about. If you want to find these expansion coefficients c of n's, you're going to do something that Professor Griffiths uses called Fourier trick. And... Um, Let's see here if we can uh, sum everything together. And you, you, you find this Fourier trick here. Let's, let's by multiplying f of x by another quantum state and integrate. So you're gonna multiply both sides by psi sub m and then integrate. That's how you find these coefficients. So we're gonna. This is f of x equals. Yeah. the sum when n starts from 1 to infinity of these expansion coefficients right times psi of n of x right so if we multiply both sides by the other quantum states psi sub m complex conjugate okay and then integrate if we do this here we have to do it here right so I'm gonna integrate after I multiply this by the other uh, 
quantum states. Dx. Here we go. So here on the right hand side, we are left with the, with the sum when n starts from 1 to infinity of the C's, the expansion coefficients. This integral is overall space, right? And we decide from the previous slide, this is the Kronecker delta, um, n. So every time, this is, this is n. Every time n starts from 1, goes to infinity, right? And m is an integer. So at some point, n will be equal to m. Okay? So when n is equal to 1, alright? Uh, that's gonna be m1. That's not good. That's gonna be 0. That's, that's what the Kronecker delta does. So every single term in this summation will be 0, but one term when n is equal to m and when m is equal to n we get c of m so all these infinite terms goes to one term c sub m so finally c sub m if you want to find it you're gonna have to integrate uh, over the quantum states psi sub m complex conjugate times the function in hand dx you do this integral you find this expansion coefficient and in the next video we're gonna we're gonna work more on this and these four properties will be used over and over and over so chronicle delta I'm not gonna explain it anymore in the future videos I'm gonna refer to it I can say, oh, check out video 9 if you want to see how we do this chronicle delta.